welcome back to my channel. I am so happy that you are here. If you are visiting for the first time, welcome. It's very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, welcome back. It is so good to see you again. I am so excited about today's projects. We are going to be hanging out in the studio, working on some really fun, quick, easy, patriotic themed projects today. And I'm excited because it feels like it's been a really long time since we've actually just hung out in the studio and spent some time playing with our crafty supplies. So I am very excited to jump into our projects today. Today is also an extra special day because I have teamed up with my really great friend Linda over at Faith Chick 777. We are we have worked together this week to bring y'all a wonderful playlist of just fantastic patriotic themed projects. And I will tell you a little bit more little bit more about that in just a bit. Alrighty guys, are you ready? Let's go craft. I'm excited about our first project. For our supplies, we're going to need some backing fabric, some accent fabric, a dowel, thread, and our cutters. So I'm going to just start out by cutting this fabric to size, and I will have all of the measurements from each of these pieces listed in the description box for y'all. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out the stars, and then our little flag pieces, and the backing pieces. <laughs> Now that all of our pieces are cut, I'm just going to kind of do a double check to make sure that everything is fitting properly on our backing fabric. And so because we're going to sew our stars to our stripes, we do want them to be at this point a little bigger than the backing. And everything is very, very wrinkled, so I'm going to go ahead and give it a quick iron before we move on to sewing. Now we are going to go ahead and sew our stripes to our stars and you do at this point want to make sure that right sides are together and then we are just going to sew these together across this very top seam. You need to leave all the other edges um, unsewn at this point. And I'm just going to go ahead and pin these. Normally I don't pin things but if you're a beginner sewer I do recommend pinning just to keep all of your pieces um, aligned properly. I am sewing everything here with a one inch seam allowance. So that is important to know when you go to cut your pieces, you wanna prepare for that one inch seam allowance. So now that we have these two pieces sewn together, I'm going to go ahead and press this seam open so that it's nice and flat. This will just help when we get ready to sew our backing on. After I get all the pieces pressed, I'm going to go ahead and just do a dry fit here to make sure that my front and my back are actually the same sizes. And for the backing with this project, I am just using some duck cloth and I chose the duck cloth to just give this piece a little extra stability and you know a little bit of firmness to it because my front pieces are just cotton fabric. So now we are going to go ahead and prepare this for sewing and you want to make sure that you have your right sides together. This is really, really important so that when we flip it after sewing, we have the correct sides showing. So we are going to go ahead and just sew across this top piece and then down all down each of the two sides, but you want to make sure that you leave that bottom open so that we have that um, opening to flip it right sides out.
So I didn't actually pin these pieces together because I'm a little bit lazy and really don't like pinning. So I do just check it periodically to make sure that all of my pieces are matching up correctly. And when you get to this seam here, you wanna make sure that you keep those two pieces flat because we don't want any puckering in that seam. And as you get to the end here, make sure that you do a couple of back stitches just to lock your stitching really securely into place. <laughs> After sewing our pieces together, I am going to go over this with my pinking shears. This just helps eliminate some of the bulk and prevents fraying when we go to flip this right side out. So now I'm going to flip this right sides out and y'all, right here is when I realized, oh my gosh, I've made a terrible mistake here. I forgot to sew in our loops because this is gonna be a banner and I wanted this to have loops at the top so that we could um, run our dowel through it. <laughs> so now I have to go and open up that entire top piece and not a fun little task when you make these mistakes, but you know, we all do it. It's, it's just, it just happens now and then. So I've gone ahead and opened this up and now we're going to go ahead and prepare this for our loops. And I am just using bias tape. I bought some extra wide double fold, double fold bias tape for my loops because this just, this just for me saves a ton of time and bias tape comes in a lot of colors. So chances are you're gonna be able to find some that coordinate with your project. So I will just go ahead and cut this to the lengths that I need. And then I'm going to go ahead and sew that open edge closed to make our loops. Okay, so now we can go ahead and sew our loops into the inside of our project. Okay, so y'all, this is one thing you wanna pay attention to when you're sewing your loops in, you wanna make sure that they are between your fabric so that they're kind of like on the inside and you want the fold of your loop to be facing down. So I just place them into position and for the center one, I just kind of eyeballed it. I didn't really measure it. Um, I was okay with eyeballing it here and I actually did pretty good. They came out pretty darn close. So I'll just go ahead and clip these into place and then we will take it back to the sewing machine and sew this the way we should have from the start. As I am sewing this, um, sewing my little loops into place, I do go over um, the loop, the just the sections where the loops are a couple of times. I do a little back stitch and a forward stitch just to reinforce those. This isn't going to be holding any heavy weight, so you don't have to go overboard here, but I do just wanna reinforce them a little bit. Okay, so now we are going to go ahead and flip this right side out again and ta-da we have loops <laughs> they look so good and i'm so surprised that i forgot to do this but you know oh well we all we all do that so now we're going to go ahead and close up the bottom half of this and i just folded those seams in and then just did a straight stitch across the bottom to close it up and for our dowel i pre-cut this to size and then drilled some holes in the ends because we're going to use um, we're going to create a wire hanger for this and i want to put the string the wire hanger through our holes in the dowel so i just go ahead and cut my wire to the length that i wanted it string it through the dowel and then i'm just going to wrap this around the dowel to hold it into place because we have to have a little extra embellishment, I ran some red wire and some blue wire through each end of the dowel and then wrapped it around my paintbrush or a pencil to just create these cute little curly cues. I love how this piece turned out. It is very sweet and elegant and just very simple. It would make a great door hanger or you could hang it anywhere in your home as just a fun 4th of July accent piece. 
I would like to introduce you all to my very sweet and dear friend, Miss Linda, over at Faith Chick 777. Y'all, if you haven't already, you have got to stop over and pay her a visit. You will just love her. Linda is incredibly talented. She inspires me all the time with her creativity, and I know that she's going to inspire you as well. I love her style, and I just love her. Just, I just love her. I love everything about her. So y'all, stop on over and pay her a visit today. She is also bringing you a wonderful playlist of all kinds of great patriotic-themed projects. I will have her channel linked in the description box for y'all, and I will have a playlist from both of our episodes today linked in the, or pinned in the comments. <laughs> okay, y'all, so head on over, give Linda a visit, tell her that I said hello and that I sent you. For this next project, we are going to create kind of a fun, whimsical jumbo door hanger firecracker. <laughs> but we're going to incorporate a lot of fun, patriotic themed things into this. I think about pinwheels this time of year. You know, anytime I'm doing something patriotic, there's just something about pinwheels that just scream 4th of July to me. So we're going to create kind of a fun little whimsical pinwheel on this and some tags and some stripes and some stars. So I started out by taping off a piece of project board and I got this from our scrap wood pile, but y'all, you can find project boards of any size and shape from most craft stores. Stores. Then I'm going to go ahead and paint my stripes in this barn red paint, but I do add a little bit of raw umber to this just to kind of deepen the red a little bit. And I'm also adding some water because I want this to have somewhat of a stained effect on my board. After we get our stripes painted, I'm going to go ahead and let that dry really well. And while that's drying, we're going to move on to painting our tags. And I am just painting these tags with a mixture of our red paint combined with a little bit of antiquing glaze. And I do paint both front and back of these tags in case some of it shows. And then I want to paint a whole bunch of stars. So we're going to paint 13 stars for the original 13 colonies. And I am just using some Waverly chalk paint here. Okay guys, so now we're going to remove our tape and this is where I get a little bit nervous because I love this process. There's just something so satisfying about removing the tape, but then I do feel nervous. It's like, what if I get a bunch of bleed through or my lines weren't straight, but everything worked out perfectly here and everything looks great. So now we can go ahead and tape off the bottom section so that we can paint the top section of our board. And I am just using some, a really dark navy blue paint here that I also watered down because I kind of want this to just also have a stained effect. And it looks really dark here in this particular clip, but actually in the end, this dries kind of a very antique looking grayish blue color. The moment of truth here. We're gonna peel back this tape and are we gonna get a straight line or a crooked line? <laughs> I did get a little bit of bleed through here, but not a big deal because we can just take our sanding file and sand that off and it just kind of lends a little bit of that fun, extra rustic feel to the project. To the top of our flag, we're just going to glue down our 13 stars that just represent our original 13 colonies. And I kind of like the rustic, old fashioned, antique feel that this lends to the project. We're going to embellish this cute little stars and stripes board with some fun tags. And I'm using my clickable stamps here to just create some fun verbiage on the stamps.
there is just something about pinwheels that <laughs> just speaks 4th of July to me and they're just so playful and fun. So we're going to create a cute little pinwheel bow of sorts on our board here, our little firecracker board with some burlap. And then we are just going to layer this whole thing with some ripped strips of fabric from using the same fabric that we used on our flag banner. And I'm just going to go ahead and start layering these on and I'm just going to layer, 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 layer until this whole thing becomes very full and fluffy. I am using hot glue here to layer on all my strips of fabric and I'm kind of layering them in like crisscross patterns to create that pinwheel effect. Next I'm just going to go ahead and glue in our cute little tags layering them on top of our pinwheel. Once my tags are in two position, I'm going to just top them with this cute little bow that I made with navy blue jute cording. And because I didn't like my tags flopping all over the place, I did decide to go ahead and hot glue them into place as well. This is my favorite part of the project. I just glued down a small piece of burlap ribbon and then came in with these Scrabble pieces that spelled out USA, hot glued them into plates. And once that hot glue was completely set up, I came in and kind of removed some of the strings to just give it that fun, rustic, whimsical look. And to complete this project, we'll just give our little burlap ribbon a slight haircut to clean things up and I think we'll call it done. This turns out so cute. I just love it. Y'all will have to let me know what you think. Isn't this cute? All right, y'all, let's make some TNT. We can't have 4th of July without a big boom. So I took these oversized dowels, drilled some holes in the top for our fuses, and then I painted them with that same rustic red that we've used in our previous projects. After painting them, I created some cute little tags to go on the outside of these, and then I thought it would be fun to wrap these in some retro old fashioned paper. So I just used some scrap of paper that I had on hand to create a fun label to go on the outside of our little TNT dowels. <laughs> Isn't this paper fun, y'all? It just kind of gives our TNT that old fashioned look that I was kind of going for here. to create this to be like a stack of TNT. So I'm going to go ahead and hot glue all three of these pieces together. Once they are hot glued together, we will go ahead and continue with our embellishments. For 
For the wicks on our TNT, I'm going to use some paper wrapped wire. And then on the ends, I did wrap it very securely with some scotch tape just to kind of keep it all held together. And then I twisted it into place in our pre-drilled holes and it held really, really well. I didn't even have to use extra glue or hot glue or anything to hold them into place. To hold our bundle all together, I'm just going to wrap it with some jute and tie it in a cute, cute little bow. And then I decided as an afterthought to create another tag that says TNT Company. So I'm just going to use my clickable stamps to stamp that onto this tag that I had already pre-stained with that really cool rustic red paint. After securing the tags into place, I will top the entire thing off with this cute little jute bow. I love how this project turned out. I think it is so cute. What do y'all think? Let's just have some fun with these ones and keep it super simple. I'm just going to tape off the top section of these dowels so that we can make the top half the blue part and then we're going to do some stripes on the bottom half. I'll just go ahead and tape off portions of this dowel to create some fun little whimsical stripes. <laughs> Using the washi tape to kind of create my little borders. I go all the way around this dowel. Although the dowel is a little bit bigger around than the washi tape, so I kind of just readjusted the tape to try to make the stripes evenly spaced. Now that all of our taping is done, we can start painting. And I'm just going to go ahead and paint these stripes with that same rustic red that we have been using for all of our projects so far. This part makes me so nervous. I don't know why, but I'm always just afraid I'm going to peel back the tape and there's just going to be all this bleed through. and. We did get a little bit, but it's not super drastic. Nothing we can't fix. All right, let's go ahead and move on. We'll get the bottom part of this taped off so that we can continue painting the top half. And we're going to paint this top part with our rustic blue. Here we go again. I'm so nervous. Are we going to have bleed through or is this going to be a perfect straight line? Oh, look at that. Perfection. <laughs> this just makes me happy, y'all. Can we get this lucky with all of them? Look at that. Yay. <laughs> Okay, for the wicks on these ones, I'm going to go ahead and use that same paper wrapped wire. I'm going to cut a little bit of a length for each one of them and then I'm going to just curl it up because I think it'd be really fun to have some curly cute fuses for these ones. And I do dab a little bit of hot glue in each of the holes to securely hold our fuses into place. How cute are these little curly cute fuses? I really, really love this. Okay, 
So now let's just bundle them all together by attaching them with this cute little jute bow and some fun embellishments. To attach our cute little heart and stars, I'm just using a little bit of hot glue and then I kind of tuck it behind the heart and everything just gets held together really securely. And then we'll attach this top heart to, or top star to the heart with some hot glue as well. And how cute is this? I think this little trio bundle is just darling. What do y'all think? Okay, y'all, so this is probably my favorite piece of them all. Last but not least, we are going to create this cool 1776 tray. So I did find this really cool tray at Joann Fabrics while I was shopping, and I didn't buy the tray because I thought, oh, I can go home and make it. And I didn't walk you guys through the process of me making the tray because it just was going to make this video way too long, but I'll share that with y'all over on Instagram stories in another day. So my goal here was to make this look as old as I possibly could. So we started out by painting the numbers with a base coat of our rustic red, and then we take that same rustic red to the tray and just paint it. And we are going to slap on a bunch of layers of paint. So after the red, we're gonna put splash on some white, and then we will splash on some black, and then we will splash on some burnt umber, and our goal here again is to make this look as old as we possibly can. And you want to be as messy as you possibly can also because we're going to splash all the paint and then we'll take it out to the shop and give it a good sanding. And then all these colors will just blend together to make this very old looking tray. <music> Okay, so here's what we have so far. Y'all, I think we can take this to the next level by taking it out into the shop and sanding this entire thing down. And by sanding it, we're going to start to expose all of those colors that we slapped on in all the layers, and it's just going to bring them out and make this piece look very vintage. I did the same technique with all of our numbers, and then I'm just going to hot glue them into place. And y'all, I really love this tray. You'll have to let me know what you think of this piece in the comments down below. What do we think? I hope you all enjoyed these projects that I put together for y'all today. I know I had a blast putting these together and creating them and sharing them with y'all. So I hope that you've been inspired somehow today to go get out all your crafty supplies and whip up some fun, patriotic themed projects for your 4th of July decor.
Alrighty friends, that is going to wrap up today's episode. Thank you all so much for being here with me today. I appreciate you taking time out of your day to come and hang out with me. I enjoy y'all's company as we worked on all these projects today. And I hope you will come back and see me again next week. We are going to do a little trash to treasure video. We'll go do a little thrift shopping and then just come back in the studio and see if we can't trash to treasure some of our items. So y'all come see me again next week. Until then, y'all take care and I will see you soon. Bye. Thank you so much to my sweet dear friend, Miss Linda at Faith Chick 777 for collabing with me in today's video. If y'all haven't already, please hop on over to her channel and give her a visit. The link to her channel will be in my description box. And when y'all jump on over there, tell her I sent you and say hello for me. Hello, I'm <laughs> okay. Let's go.